If it's Sunday, it must be Patchwork Staycation time. Well, folks, I'm telling you, you've done such a great job of sharing your photos and your comments, and I'm just delighted to see the range of fabrics. And those of you who are, are commenting and, and being engaged, we really do appreciate that. Here's something we've had come up quite a bit. Where do I find stuff? It's sort of like, where's Waldo? It's like, where is this? It is so simple, there's an arrow right below the video. If that is clicked on, everything we talk about has a direct link right there. It also has points for you to zero in on a technique so that you don't even have to watch the entire video, although I think you should because that was a lot of fun. Now you notice from the set behind me, you probably already have a little bit of a clue that we're gonna talk some flags today. Part of the patriotic part of working on this Civil War legacy is a lot of the history and a lot of the flag information. I want you to notice this cute little flag that's right over my shoulder. That is going to be one of your free patterns. Now you already know where to find your free stuff. I just thought it was so cute. It's just rectangles and strips. And I will tell you one of the fun things about this. I have done these where I made uh, placemats that is about the perfect size for a placemat. And you know 4th of July is coming up. How much fun would it be to give a gift to those? And again, you folks got enough scraps. This would be a great little project for you. So that's one of your free patterns. The quilt that's hanging on the wall is that stars and stripes. And as you look at this quilt, I wanna share a little history with you about this. Mary Teeter, who is from Noblesville, Indiana, actually made the real quilt, which lives in the Smithsonian. And she made this during the Civil War. Um, the design was adapted from the American flag, named Stars and Stripes, appeared in the July 1861 issue of Peterson's Magazine, a woman's periodical that was published in Philadelphia. What's so neat about this, there's 34 stars applicated in the center that represented the number of states in the Union from July 4th, 61 until July 4th, 63. And then she put those same number of stars applique around the border. Now I own this little quilt and for the life of me folks, I don't know where I got it. I think I bought it and this was probably 20 years ago and it was from a student I think that had made this from a photo of the quilt that lives in the Smithsonian that uh, Mary Teeter made. And Noblesville's just up the road from us. And it's amazing that all that history lives there. And if you ever, it's on um, display occasionally at the Smithsonian, but my version or the one I have is about a third of the size. We've got a little bit of history and a color photo of it for you to download if you choose. By the way, who got their crossword puzzle? Did everybody do their crossword puzzle? Okay. And if you still need an answer, I'm not gonna share it yet. You've also got a little two-page handout that is going to teach you how to take a piece of paper and fold it and get the five-pointed star that our friend Betsy Ross encouraged George Washington to use instead of the six-pointed star that he was going to put in our flag. So I couldn't help but share our Betsy Ross pattern with you. Um, a lot of the women's history work that I have done, Betsy Ross is one of the women, and this is a pattern that is available on our website, and it is not a free pattern, but in the event that you decided, gee, I think I want to study a little bit more about Betsy Ross, then we've got that for you as well. Let's take a look at Union Square. Now, I've pieced this block a lot of ways in a lot of sizes, and it is, as you look at this on camera, and by the way, it's on page seven in your book. For those of you who are working with AccuQuilt, A is die one, B is die four, C is die two, and D is die five using your AccuQuilt eight inch cube. Your traditional math is written in the book. 
If you are doing ruler work, as I will be, your B is two and a half and your D is going to be cut two and a half. And those are strips. When I work with specialty rulers, I work with strips. If you're doing traditional math like it is in the book, then you are going to be working um, with squares that you cross cut. This is really quite often referred to as a simple nine patch. It's, it's really a tic-tac-toe board, folks. Okay, now I've got my tic-tac-toe board drawn and I drew it off center a little bit just so you wouldn't think I was a professional. <laughs> See, look at that drawing. I even have a little squares here and I drew it scurry. So anyway, I've got a tic-tac-toe board. That's this block. So here's what I'm going to do. In the four center, not the middle and not the four corners, the other four squares, I want you to put an X in each one of those squares. Just put yourself an X in there. And it's just X the four corners. Now I could have done that like that. Okay, that's these four guys. Now in the other four outside corners, make yourself a four patch. Just draw a little, four little squares. See how they don't even have to be perfect? Now in those half, the two of them that face out, and if you have to look at your pattern, you can half the ones that go like that. I just drafted the block. This is a 12 inch block. You don't sash this one or anything. So this block should be 12 and a half when it's all done. Um, let's just say that you wanted this to be nine inches. It's three, six, nine. Let's say you wanted it to be 12. It's four, eight, 12. I want a 12 inch block. So that's the math that I'm gonna work on on this one. And again, I'm covering a little bit more information for you because I know a lot of you are still waiting on your books. When I make this a four, four inches per element, what I'm doing now is I've got three times four as a block. So I've got a 12 inch block. That means this guy has to finish four, these four guys have to finish four, and the center is four. And I'm ready to go, that's finished. If you look at this, if this whole thing is four, we know these guys have to be two. Now, once I know that, and you already know, depending on the method you're going to use, is it rulers, is it AccuQuilt, or is it traditional? you add to that. Then there's an imaginary line running through here, let's pretend. This guy is two inches tall, this guy is two inches tall, and on and on. Quarter square triangles are a little bit different in that quarter square triangles will calculate, you know the old seven eighths we talked about on the half squares? The quarter square triangle would want to know what this measurement is, which we've determined is four, and it wants an inch and a quarter added. So I would have to cut, according to your pattern, a five and a quarter inch square and cut it twice to get four equal quarter square triangles with seam allowance added. That's why I don't like doing this because I got to cut a two and a half here, a two and seven eighths inch there, and a five and a quarter there. I'm already in a bad mood, folks, if I have to do all of that. If I own a half square triangle and a quarter square triangle, this entire corner comes out of a two and a half inch strip with my ruler. This entire thing comes out of a two and a half inch strip with my ruler. And I only need a four and a half inch square for the middle. So I got one size strip instead of three to do that. That's why I do it that way. Let me cut it for you. I'm going to layer my two strips together because I'm gonna cut both my quarter squares and my half squares out of the same size strip. So I'm going to use, now I've got one of the earlier rulers that says Nifty Notions, just to remind you that these tools, 
I'm gonna work with the good measure quarter square and the nifty notion half square. They're the same tool, but this is the new generation. This is the new branding name. So it is the rulers with a cause, a percentage of the profits from the sales of these tools goes to breast cancer research, just so you know. So I wanna show you, again, I'm gonna cut two half square triangles. So I'm ready to go. I've set my ruler. I've got my light and dark together. So there's set one. And I'm gonna turn the ruler over and there's set two. Now the thing I didn't show you before is my half square ruler is my favorite friend to cut a square because the same position for my second cut, if I just slide right over here, look at there. There is my two and a half inch square. So I'm gonna need two half square triangles and a light and a dark square, or light and a medium. So there they are, and I've cut those guys. Now the thing I've not cut on camera for you is the quarter square triangle, so let's do it this way. Remember, my language for you is every tool in the collection, if your right hander lays down like you read the words as if they were in a book. Blah, good measure, book two and a half inch line. Flush, there's fabric under the entire part of the ruler that lives above that. Now because I'm sitting a little awkward here, I don't wanna cut a finger off, and I've already cut some clean ones to sew, so this is just a motion to show you, So, which is a pretty sloppy one. There's a set, and then I'm gonna turn this so I can give you a cleaner cut here. I don't care if my ruler is wrong side up or right side up because now all I have to do is have the nose even and, and there I go. So I've cut, I've cut myself four half squares and actually I only needed one of these and one of these. So I'm gonna throw these away. I'm gonna come back and pick up my dark and I'm gonna snag Two more just for grin so I can show you this little demo. Oh dear. It's, I've been telling you when you sit and demo when you don't normally do that, it's a little bit more awkward. Now, here's what I wanna lay out and then I will sew this. All righty. Let's bring our block back into view. Now I've used different fabric, but because I want you to be able to see this when I sew it. So there's my background. This is kind of my medium. This could have been a light and then my two darks. That's it. And then I've got my half square triangles. Let's sew it real quick. Okay, now that you've seen me cut the quarter square triangle, my next decision is there's four elements. Which two am I gonna sew together first? I can sew this pair together and that pair, or I can sew this pair and this pair. There is no right or wrong, but once you make the decision, stick with it. So this is my outside block, this is my background, so I'm more inclined to join these two and these two, but I wouldn't be incorrect if I did the other. So I've made my decision, so if I were gonna sew 50 of these, this is how I would sew it. So now I'm gonna pick these up, and I am gonna sew a couple triangles, and I'm gonna go to the machine. Okay, now we're ready to sew, and if you'll notice, my needle is in the down position, and I know a lot of you are gonna to wanna to know, why is that little piece of red fabric in there? My machine doesn't need it. I've just sewn with it forever and I like it in there. It's kind of my little leader, starter, cheater, whatever you want to call it. So my needle is in the down position. I'm raising my foot, I'm going in, and now I'm gonna sew my two sets of quarter square triangles together. And now I'm gonna pick up, oh, I didn't lock my needle down. Now I'm going to pick up the next one and run it through. Now I told you guys I wasn't gonna sew another triangle, but I am gonna put one of the half squares, I cut two, I'm gonna put one of those in just so I can sneak in and get out 
my two quarter squares. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to make the decision to, to press them to one side. And this dark one, I'm going to press everything. See, if I do that one there and then this one here, and then I pick these up, and I'm going to come back together. See, I've got the two sets sewn, and I'm working these so that you can get a clear picture, but I wouldn't be yanking on this because it's bias. So I'm going to lock those two seams right there, and I'm going back to the machine. Now I've got that in. I'm going to take one or two stitches, and this is where I like to take the time to make sure that I've got that guy locked in. And then I'm going to sew right through there. And then I stop when I cross that. And then again, the stiletto is just kind of like an extra finger. Now, right now, I've got one more half square. I'm going to pick him up and slide him in only so that I can go in the back and cut this. So now I like to go ahead when this comes out of the machine and I get all four of those points cleaned up. And if you're, if you're a little skittish about this, then certainly you can always go to your cutting mat. Now, there's my unit. And remember, I take that little nose off and I'm ready to roll on that one. So all they really are is this little guy right here. So the two squares I cut, there is this unit. So I'm just going to sew set one, set two, boom, got that guy. Then you saw how I positioned to get this guy. So right here is what this would have looked like had I used this coloring. This, how you color this one is going to be strictly up to you. Here I showed it with a, a medium sort of. Here I did a light and a medium light. It's just preference. Now I want to I'm going to grab this one off camera to show you. Look at my 30s one. How slick is that? It's real clear that I wanted this to pop a little bit. And I'm just having a good time mixing these. But what I want you to see is these are really just nine squares. And we created something different in these corners. Now, I just can't stand it. One of you asked me a question on, um, on our Facebook page about starting the, some of the finishing things. So if you were to turn to page 15 in your book, you'll notice that this is the one that has got all of our little filler elements. Now, I know obviously where I'm going with this because I've made four or five of them. While I'm sure for you this is a little daunting, now as you look at page 15 in your book, you're going to see at, oops, I'm a little backwards here. You'll see that there's a bunch of little strips below this. And if you count those, there's 12 of them. If this is a 12-inch block, I know that each one of those have to be an inch. Your directions are there about what size to cut them. On this one, because I've made this quite a few times, I decided to put my little bars on the right side and my little patches on the bottom, which is the reverse of what your drawing says. Can you still see all Because this way, I'm going to lead in. I don't know for sure what's going to be the next block. Probably the same one that's in the pattern because I can sign in the center of that. Every one I've made, this has been my top left-hand block. I don't know why. I just like the way it looks. I like the weight of it. 
but because some of you wanted to get a jump start, these little filler pieces are going to fit. There, there's two 14 inch blocks and everything else is 12 finished. Finish 12, finish 14 in this quilt. So if you look at those and every time I had already pre-cut all these blacks, I actually had a lot of those strip sizes pre-cut and I thought, well, that's a good question. I think Michael's one to ask that question and I thought, I'm just going to whip some of those little guys together. You could make these components without ever sewing them to the block because that would give you the opportunity to move these blocks around as you choose to because you're staying on a grid size when you're doing these. So if you have any questions on the this, you can ask me on the um, Facebook page. Man, this is jumping ahead a little bit, but my goodness, you guys are so quick. You have those blocks made in like... 27 minutes or something. You're going to have this quilt. I'm going to have to hurry up and we may have to post a Wednesday and a Sunday to get you folks all caught up. I couldn't stand it. I had to make a Betsy Ross in the black, white, and the red. Now, if I decided that I wanted Betsy to live here, see, I'm still on my 12 and 12. See, this is a 12 and this is a 12. Now I've got these fillers that could go here. I could also pull this down and I could put fillers up there. So once you make your fillers and you stay on the math of what's in this, the positioning of them is arbitrary. I wanted this in my black one because on this black one, I am probably not going to do the patterns exactly like the book. I'm going to do some of the, our, some of the ones you're going to get as free projects. My blue one is going to be exactly like the book. My 30s and my black one, I'm going to vary a little bit. And I'll share those with you as I move along because that'll give you choices about how you're going to do it. And one other tip, a couple of you have been asking me for sure about this framing. Let me tell you that on the framing, when I said I wouldn't, I didn't mean you couldn't. I meant that sometimes I don't know what color I want on the outside, but as long as you're comfortable with making that choice, you just go ahead and say, oh, I'm framing mine. If I don't like it, I'll take it off. But here's the other thing I want you to bear in mind. There's one block in your book. The Confederate basket on page six in your book is a 10 inch block that gets turned on point and framed, and it becomes one of your 14 inch blocks. You only have two 14s in the book. And it's the Kentucky Bell and the basket. Let's just say you went, man, I don't know if I want that basket. Now I'm not gonna do it yet. Any of the 10 inch blocks you have, which you one of yours that you just did, your memory wreath was a 10 inch block. If you didn't frame memory wreath, memory wreath could be turned on point and could replace the Confederate basket. So I'm gonna also, as we get a little closer, I'm gonna give you another couple of basket choices that you can put in lieu of that particular one. The name would of course not be the same, but you know, we don't have police on this sort of thing. So I'm getting, I want some flexibility in your choices because that's what makes it uniquely your quilt. I mean, anyone can take a pattern and recreate it and make it exactly like the one that's made. And I'm always flattered when you choose to do that. But I'm more inspired when you go a little bit rebel. <laughs> oh dear, rebel, Civil War. If you go a little bit rebel and you say, wait a minute, I'm gonna do mine this way. That is my goal in this class, is to be able to help you move past maybe what you have done. Many of you could be teaching this class. I'm well aware of that. But for those of you who this is kind of um, a new adventure, I want you to feel real comfortable in the direction you're going. So that's just a little snippet in Choices. I don't want to confuse those of you who are new in this, but I also want to keep those of you who are um, have more skill in this to be comfortable and not bored. I want you to be able to move on. I want to talk one other thing on product, and I don't know if you've seen me work with this. This is one of those things that you need to be calling your retailer. Wherever your quilt shop is, and bless their hearts, they're trying to stay open, they're working, they're doing 
frantic, run out the front doors all masked and, and geared up to be able to deliver thread and fabric and stuff. A pressing mat, I've used one for years. I don't need it necessarily when I'm, um, when I'm working with my Laura Star iron, but boy, I'll tell you on most any iron, there's not enough steam and enough heat to really get the blocks flat. There's all brands, there's all different sizes. I love this one because our largest square ruler is 14 inches and this rascal's 14, which means almost always my 12 inch blocks are gonna lay on there and I could press these little fellas all day long this way into this. Um, I am sure that every one of your retailers are sitting on some sort of a pressing mat, a wool pressing mat. Um, give them a call and say, I don't own one of these and I need one and what have you got? And I'm sure they will be thrilled to hear from you. I wanted you to be able to see one of my colorways on everything I've made to this point. So I chose the black because I didn't do a Betsy Ross in the other colors, who knows, I might. So these are the four that I have completed thus far for my black and red. And as you look at those, you're gonna say, oh dear, I didn't think I wanted a Betsy. Well, maybe I do want a Betsy. And that's an alternate block and you're going to have other choices as we move along. I hope I have given you enough to work on. Some of you folks who are just kicking these out, I'm telling you, you may have to start another quilt. I did post on the, uh, on our Facebook page that you might even consider taking a block that you just love and making two or three blocks of that just to get working through your stash and make some table runners. And you know, Christmas will be day after tomorrow and then you'll have your presents all done. Please be sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel and you know, click the button, you know, all that little routine of all the stuff that happens. Also, really start searching and make sure you also know where to find everything. How will I get these handouts? How will I get these things? And everything is going to be in detail. Brian works like overtime and he not paid for overtime. And he works overtime trying to get this and all spot proof and all of that bunch of stuff. Uh, continue to share your photos for us, like this, encourage your friends to join us. And here's the other thing. Somebody said, I don't wanna be behind. You will never be behind because this is kind of like watching all of a Netflix show at one time. So you could just binge watch all these sessions at the end and just work marathon or something. So it doesn't matter if you start this week, next week, or the next week, you can catch up by watching these. So for those of you who your friends are kind of lagging because they're like, oh, I'm already a week behind, you're never going to be behind on this. i give give $100 for a manicure right now. So we're all going to have to just survive this with the best we can do with what's in front of us. But stay safe, enjoy, have a great time post on Patchwork Staycation, and we'll see you next Sunday. Bye-bye. I just went straight into the block without saying, now let's sew. No, you didn't. Oh, did I? Yeah. Oh, okay. That may make more sense.